Welcome to another InDesign CC 2021 tutorial class from my book, Chapter 6. This one's all about working with styles. And I really like this one. I think it's really important for you to remember how important it is to work with styles and to understand how they work. Because it does really create a opportunity for you to make changes on a global level very easily. It also makes sure that your designs stay really consistent and that you are being the best you know, your best possible designer you can be by letting the software do the work for you. So let's go ahead and dive into chapter nine and let's go ahead and close chapter eight up. Let's do a file open. Let's go up here to lesson number eight, lesson nine, and grab that start file. So let's go ahead and take a peek at the end file just so you can see what we're making. Let's go ahead and open that end file. All right, so your end file here, let's go ahead and take a peek at what we have going on. We're gonna add a drop shadow to this one. We're gonna come in, we're going to create this urban oasis gardens. We're gonna create some different styles here. We're gonna learn how to style these uh, tables, which you'll need to do for your publications at one point or another. Uh, here we do some styles that are called nested styles. So just by making a few little things like making sure you put a colon and then a period, you can change a whole bunch of stuff at once, which makes it very nice. And oops, let's do view fit spread window. And we're going to style this table as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's do a file, save as. Make sure you're in your lesson nine. Let's go with first initial, last name, underscore in design, classroom and a book, chapter number nine. So we've been slowly working our way through the publication, which is, or through the book, which is really awesome. You should be really proud of yourself and have learned quite a few things by now. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure we're in our essentials workspace. Let's go ahead and reset that. So I'm gonna reset my essentials so that we are all from the same starting place. Now, if you do uh, go into your book on a page 239, 240, there's some really great information there about how styles work and what they're about. Uh, you should probably take a peek at that. Let's go ahead and start at page 241. We're going to go ahead and create a, a style. So let's go to pages. Let's go ahead to page number two. And we're going to create one for this heirloom vegetable seeds. So we're going to grab our type, type tool. And we're going to go ahead and grab it. We're going to create a paragraph style, which means anything that is between these two paragraph markers is going to get that style. So let's go ahead and we're going to style it first and then create the style. Uh, in our properties, we're going to go to and use our fill. We want it to be tomato red, red tomato. And we want to go ahead and make it. 18 points. And under here in the paragraph area, we're going to put a space before and a space after. So if you don't have all of those, make sure that this has been expanded. So in space before, which we can see is right here, space before, we're going to put 0.5 inches. Which is pretty big. Oh, 0 0.05. There we go. Let's just put it in 0 0.05 tab. And in space after, which is the next one, we're going to put 0 0.025 and a tab. All right, so that'll automatically put some space before it. So you've got a nice little space, which you wouldn't necessarily have if you hit return. And we've got a little bit of space after. Usually it's a best practice to just do space before or space after, but in this case we're showing you how to do both. So now we're going to create a, let's go ahead and click off of it so you can see what it did. So it made it red and all those other attributes that we gave it. So let's go ahead, select the words. Let's come down to our paragraph styles. So let's go to type and come down here to paragraph styles. It's going to open up a panel for us. I'm going to go ahead and take that panel and dock it until I get the little blue because I know it's one I'm going to be using again. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and make that smaller. I'm going to grab character styles too while it's open. Because we know we're going to use them over and over today. All right, so in our paragraph styles, I can see it's in paragraph styles. I've got this one that says we're going to add a new one. So let's go here to the bottom and hit the, or let's do it through here. Let's go through our panel menu and do a new paragraph style. So as always, there's about 10 different ways to do things. We're going to go ahead and name this head two. So headline two. And let's go ahead and based on, let's do select, let's do no paragraph style. And in this one, we want to say, okay, if they do head to, then we want it to do something else. So then automatically, please make it into intro body. Okay. And I can go ahead and create a shortcut. So it's something I'm going to use all the time. I'm going to go ahead and hit shift or command and number nine. So I'm going to go shift and nine. And it's going to go ahead and create that shortcut for me. All right. So now when I do shift command nine later, it'll automatically install that style. So we do want it to apply to the section and we want to say, okay. And now we've got head two, but head two appeared in our body text. We don't necessarily want it there. So I'm going to take it out of body text and slide it up here into my head. So you can create groups of your styles, make it a little bit easier here. It tells us what that shortcut is going to be. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is let's do a save. And let's go ahead and apply it. So let's go ahead to our other page. Let's grab fruits and flowers. Select that and let's add our head two. Same with tools and accessories. Now you can notice I didn't highlight the whole thing because it's a paragraph and I want everything in that paragraph to be there. I don't have to necessarily change the whole element. All right. Now, what if we decide, you know, what if we look at it and go, hey, I really like, I don't like green, this red, I want it to be green instead. So let's go ahead and take a peek at our styles. So you can see here we've got with our override, you can see there's a few places where we have overridden the style. So we either need to change it, change the style, or make it so that uh, this is consistent. So for some reason, this is not it's telling me this does not have it applied. So this has got the plus. So it says it's got ligatures, contextual alternates. So I want that to be okay. So what we're going to do is go here and we're going to redefine the style in our hamburger menu and say that anything, anytime that they want to use this and it's okay. So you could do the same thing to make this green um, or do other uh, things as well. So let's go ahead and create a character style. So let's go back to page number two in our pages. And let's go into the first paragraph. And we should have a character style that we're going to create. We want to make one for Oasis. I'm going to go ahead and turn the blue off. Oasis, Urban Garden Oasis. Urban Oasis Gardens. There we go. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and select that. And it's a lot easier sometimes to create what you want it to look like and then go ahead and create the style itself. So we want Urban Oasis Gardens to be a special color, but we don't want everything to be. So we want to go ahead and create a character style this time. So let's go ahead from the appearance area of our properties. Let's change the fill to be green that uh, medium green and in the more area. So if you don't have all these things showing under character, we want to go ahead and make it small caps. So we get a different look. And now we want to create a new style. So we're going to go to the bottom of our character style this time. And we want to go, we want to double click here going to give us that character style one. 
Let's go ahead and to our panel menu and oh, what am I doing? Here we go. Just double click on it and we're going to call it garden name. All right. And we have it already applied to our things there. So we're good there. And our shortcut, let's go ahead and make it Alt Shift 8 or Shift Command 8 if you're on a Mac. So Alt Shift 8 for me. So I've got it based on none and we're going to say OK. So now let's go ahead in our text and now we've got Urban Oasis Gardens again. So I'm going to hit that Alt Shift 8. And for some reason it's not working. I don't know what I did wrong. It should do that. It should work. But for some reason it's not right now. Awesome. All right, so it's in there. I don't usually use a lot of those type of tricks, so shift alt number eight, shift alt. All right, it works on my keypad. It doesn't work on my numbers at the top, so that doesn't make a lot of sense. That is how it goes. So let's go ahead and make sure we've changed all of those into the Urban Oasis characters all four times. And I think that's all. Let's do a Control S and save. And let's deselect. So click out here on our board. And we're going to play with some more styles here in a minute. Let's go ahead and cut this one and we will start. Uh, pick up on nesting styles in the next one.